So we're finally, finally, <laughs> finally back on the VR6. So we got the blackboard out, 81 and a half mil, and we got fresh uh, JE pistons, and right now we are gapping the rings. So all the pistons are on the rods, and we got the circ hooks in, cranks ready to go, uh, polished all the bearing surfaces. My brother has all of these gapped, and he still has to do one more on the little gapper that we got. It was like 50 bucks off Amazon. So we're gonna get right on to that and assemble this crank, put the crank in the bottom of this engine, put the pistons in, they're all numbered, they're all like labeled, ready to be put in. And uh, hopefully we'll have this lower end together tonight. Come on, let's go, let's go. Ugh. So the ring gaps, we're doing um, 18 thousandths on the top, on the second, uh, 20 thousandths, pretty much going off of the street moderate turbo nitrous. Uh, end gaps. When you measure ring end gaps on a VR6, you have to keep in mind that the cylinders are on a seven and a half degree angle. So when you put the rings in the cylinder, the rings have to be parallel with the cylinder. So you can't use the top of the piston because the top of the piston is at an angle and it's not going to work. So my brother today made this piece, which is like 81.4 millimeter. It's like just a little bit under the 81.5 bore we have here. And basically we're just using this. He also faced this side off and we're using this to get the ring in there right in order to gap these things and make sure they're hundred percent right here. You can probably see how that's at an angle. So when you're putting the rings on, uh, the pistons, you need to make sure that the numbers are facing up on all the rings. Also in the little booklet that they give you with the rings, there is a ring orientation diagram and they want you to put the ring, like the open end of the rings, um, at a certain like orientation compared to like where the engine is, like engine front right here. And they want you to divide these things up so they're not like together basically. So the Compression doesn't just blow by. So let's freaking go. You can be able to get that in the bore. Mm. So we got all the rings on all the pistons, and we're opening up the uh, rod bearings that we got for the crank and the main bearings. So we're about to drop it in here, and uh, are we gonna check them? The yeah. clearances? Yep. About to check them and get this thing put together. I'm hyped. It's always, when's it gonna be done? These are the right ones. Yeah. You've seen people say to use uh R36. Yeah. Yeah. 3.6 bearings. I think it's because they're like coated. coated. And they're cheap. I should have got them. Compared to people say they've never had problems with rod bearings. Or main bearings. Mass. I remember someone used that like red grease and they put mess. And someone was roasting in the comments. We got the crank in, got all the rings on the pistons, and we were starting to put on the caps, but we just we got distracted. We did get the uh, two thrust bearings in. I said that. Which there. you can see the one sticking up a little bit, and we got the studs for the ARPs, uh, the main studs, and dude, that's it. That's all we got done. That's kind of weak for tonight. So tomorrow we'll get all this crap together, and in the next clip, we we'll be we'll be tackling it. We got the last ring. Yep, we got the uh, ring filer, and these things work all right. They're a little, they're a little whack, but I mean, if you're just at home putting together engines every once in a while, these are absolutely fine. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Numbers are up. Mm -hmm. Numbers always go up on the rings, and that goes for uh, this engine and every bike I've ever messed with. The ring, any kind of letter or number, always goes up. What do you got? What kind of bearings? Just uh, King? King standard size rod bearings. So we got the King Racing, the 1000s. They're oversized and we were thinking <laughs> something else and if you were getting these and using just a stock crank and just kind of running your engine, building it in your garage, 
then definitely get that um, standard size the 1000th is not the one you need which is oversized and I'm guessing that's for a thicker oil like racing I've no I, don't, I have no idea all right so we got some assembly lube just got that at what like AutoZone or some kind of store around here pet yep. boys ARP rod bolts on the stock connecting rods with the JEs Dude, them pistons are freaking sweet so what's the hardest part <laughs> getting them things in there the rings or getting the rod lined up with the crank well neither of them is hard you just gotta do them at the same time do them at the same time so when you're doing that stuff like that happens mm-hmm and you were putting one of the bolts on the rods to like help yeah you be able to reach it down up under here it's good <laughs> yep that's how boost works yep that's good so we're just cleaning these uh, bearing surfaces as best we can just kind of wiping all the oil off so we get a good reading with uh, plastic gauge so there's a little piece of plastic gauge it just looks like a piece of fishing string and put it on the uh, little crank journal let this thing focus for a second. There you go. So put that on. Make sure all the surfaces are clean on the bearings. Make sure the rod cap is the right way. Yep. All right, check. Uh, put it on super square and not like all, like you're 10 years old. <laughs> and rod bolts. So the torque spec for these ARP rod bolts are 51 newton meters, which is 38 foot pounds. And that's what we've been torquing them to, to check the bearing clearances, because that's what it's called for. So it's torque to spec, and don't turn the crank, because you'll just wash out that uh, plastic gauge. And then you just loosen. There's the plastic gauge all mush. I got my metric side and old shtick has his inch side. So the metric measurement is 0.02 to 0.07 millimeters. And we've been getting about 0.4 for like every single one of these. They're pretty consistent. Here is the spec. Um, we got the old Bentley manual. New, um, it even says plastic gauge right there. 0.02 to 0.07 mil, which is uh, eight tenths to two thousandths and eight tenths and dude we've been getting pretty much right in the center of that on every single one of these with the king standard bearings and shoot what do you got to do now torque this and we're done yep did you torque the mains yeah I did but I kind of want to just double check just make sure I've been marking every single one of these um, as we've been torquing on the right way yep we got <laughs> our we got our Elmo uh, <laughs> toothbrush yeah. boom both done so I get my little marker all right so we are done yeah here wait 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 what, wait what, what? Oh, true. Make sure it still works. <laughs> well, it still spins. We did something right. All right, guys, we are all torqued. And I think this is it for tonight. We measured all of the uh, rod bearings, made sure they were all good, torqued everything down. Dude, we got to start wrapping this thing up. We got to get this clutch on. Stuff needs to start happening. This thing's been apart for way too long.